Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. As we all know, TSMC is the dominant player in the global chip production field, and the United States has many chip design giants such as Qualcomm, Intel, Nvidia, and AMD. If the United States can win TSMC, then the United States will monopolize the entire chip discourse in the past. In order to suppress Chinese technology companies, the United States did not hesitate to pass a 52 billion US dollar chip subsidy law. If it wants to change this situation, it needs to accelerate the development of bonding technologies, such as photolithography in the country. In order to suppress the development of Chinese technology companies and strengthen the development of the domestic chip manufacturing industry in the United States, the United States passed a $52 billion chip subsidy bill, aiming to attract chip manufacturers such as TSMC to build factories in the United States. As a giant in the chip foundry industry, TSMC has long maintained a monopoly on more than 70% of global chip production orders. However, as the United States imposed sanctions on Huawei, TSMC followed suit and took sanctions against Chinese semiconductor companies and stopped providing production services to Huawei, its second largest customer. This resulted in Huawei's mobile phones gaining nothing in terms of high-end chips and product sales declining sharply. TSMC founder Zhong Zhongmo even publicly stated that he could make mainland China 20 years behind in the chip field. However, unexpectedly, Huawei mobile phones successfully launched China's own high-end chips through independent research and development and achieved 100% localization of the chip industry. This is undoubtedly adding insult to injury for TSMC, because Huawei's independent research and development of high-end chips means that TSMC will completely lose orders from mainland China. The rise of Huawei's high-end chips has put TSMC into an unprecedented dilemma. In addition, as customers such as Qualcomm have also reduced production, TSMC is also facing pressure to survive while losing orders. In an environment of oversupply in the global chip market, TSMC executives have to take measures to significantly reduce the price of 7 nanometers chips in order to grab orders. The price reduction is expected to be around 5% to 10%. For TSMC, this is almost an unprecedented drastic price reduction. But in order to survive, TSMC has to shamelessly compete for orders. With the rise of the mainland's chip industry, TSMC is facing severe challenges. In the past, TSMC relied on orders from the mainland market for support. However, while sanctioning mainland semiconductor companies, it deliberately restricted the supply of many core components in an attempt to suppress the mainland's chip market and purchase from the mainland at high prices. However, now that China has its own core technology, whether it is 7 nanometers, 14 nanometers, or 28 nanometers chips, it is no longer a necessity for TSMC. Faced with the rise of the mainland's chip industry and the substantial improvement in independent innovation capabilities, TSMC had to stoop to survival and began to seek chip orders in the mainland. However, due to the strong competitiveness of the mainland chip industry, TSMC has difficulty obtaining enough orders and has to start thinking about the path to self-breakthrough. In order to grab orders, TSMC had to start cutting prices on 7 nanometers chips. Although a 5% to 10% price reduction is not much for consumers, it is a huge compromise for TSMC. This is the first time that TSMC has cut prices so significantly, but in order to maintain market share and survival space, TSMC has to take this embarrassing measure. TSMC was once the top manufacturer in the industry, but under the current situation, they have to accept reality and actively seek breakthroughs. However, 
just relying on price cuts to gain market share is not a long-term solution. TSMC also needs to strengthen its own research and development capabilities, actively expand other markets, and find new growth points. Facing the real dilemma, TSMC needs to re-examine its development direction. If it relies solely on its foundry business, TSMC's prospects will gradually become bleak. Therefore, TSMC needs to increase its investment in research and development and improve its technical level and innovation capabilities. Only through independent research and development and innovation can we occupy an advantageous position in the fierce market competition. In addition, TSMC can also consider expanding its business in other areas, such as emerging technologies, such as the Internet of Things and artificial intelligence. By entering emerging markets, TSMC can increase its profit sources and reduce its dependence on the chip foundry business. Judging from the production plan of TSMC's US factory, although TSMC has established an advanced wafer fab in the United States, its production time is far later than TSMC's domestic market. After the US 3 nanometers wafer fab is completed and put into production, TSMC's 2 nanometers and 1 nanometer technology will emerge. So the United States has not been able to obtain TSMC's more advanced wafer fab technology as it wished, and TSMC's establishment of a plant in the United States only serves as a delayer, and TSMC's establishment of a plant in the United States only serves as a containment. And it can please the United States to get more orders. TSMC established a 28 nanometers factory in mainland China mainly because it saw SMIC making profits in the 28 nanometers chip market. So it also wanted to carve up the mature 28 nanometers chip market. In short, TSMC faces severe challenges, but it also contains unlimited opportunities. Only by constantly adapting to market changes, strengthening R&D and innovation, and finding the right direction for development can TSMC remain invincible in the fierce competition. It needs to get rid of the past thinking of eating mainland China's food and smashing mainland China's bowl and truly cooperate and compete with the mainland's chip industry to achieve common progress and win-win results. Thank you for watching this video. Please don't forget to subscribe our channel.